What's going on Axie fam, Elijah here back with another video. I know that it's been a while since I've posted and that's gonna be part of what I'm addressing today is why I stopped making Axie videos. And part of why I've been away is that I'm actually traveling so I'm not in my normal setup with all my stuff but I will be back very soon. This video is also going to include some news on recent events, what's happening, how it's looking for Axie Origins at the moment and where we might end up heading into season two. Some very exciting results for our guild meta Meditate, Theban won another season, which is absolutely insane. First place season one, first place season zero, and the world champion at AxiCon for Axie Origins. The man's just such an incredible player and person. We all look up to him. He gives such good advice on how to prepare your mindset, even if you're struggling with the game. He lives in a reality where there's no excuses. And if you're interested in learning more about what it takes to compete at this level, he just recently did a new podcast episode with Gila from Quest. It's called the Gila Gossip Podcast. It's super good. It's like two hours long. If you want that insider knowledge, then go check it out. I'll give you a little taste right here of something that he's addressing within Axie. And it's around runes and charms and how he actually thinks that that's potentially the most harmful part of the game right now. And the worst part is like runes and Charms are more powerful than the axes. It's as simple as that. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how I really feel about the game, right? Like the reason why we're in the situation where we feel like the game is less skillful and it's pay to win is strictly and purely, in my opinion, by the way, because of rules and charms. Yep. And it's not because they're expensive or inaccessible. It's because they are passive. Okay? okay. That's the problem with runes and charms. They are passive. Now, when V2 was out and axes was still pay to win. Right? You still had to buy strong axes, yeah. right? That were bred and people, you know, they, 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 it's at a high price point and supply and demand happens. But axes were not passive. When you bought an axie that is super good, you still had to know how to play it. With runes and charms, when you buy it, you just equip it to your axie and that's it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why people call it pay to win because yeah, it doesn't it's do anything yeah. except for just give you the super boost. And that's it. So he then goes on to give some examples of how he thinks runes and charms could be more active in the game. Things you actually have to click on and utilize at certain moments. Things that have finite abilities. It's not just an ongoing thing throughout the whole time. I really appreciate that the guy who is at the top is willing to come out and talk about these things that are really an issue for a lot of players. The fact that you can become so powerful by purchasing something and it doesn't require the same level of skill that we saw with outplay plays in V2, for instance. So I'm not saying this is an easy task for Sky Mavis or for balancing or anything, but it is necessary that we start to ask these tough questions if we don't want it to just be a repetitive cycle. Moving on to the next piece of news, another thrilling result for Meditate Esports. We just won the Method Meta Guild Masters League, and I'm talking about our Japanese team here in Mino, Dehi, Yu, and even Ken Ken, who comes from Puzzle, has joined them in their journey to the top here, first place, $70,000. Absolutely insane the way that these prize pools have been growing lately. And I couldn't be more happy, more proud. These are the best guys out there. A lot of people just really love all three of these players. They've been dominating since the V2 days. I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of highlights from this event so you can get a feel for what it was like and perhaps get excited for future events. One more thing that was really cool about this is you'll notice that there's only epic runes equipped. They didn't allow people to use mystics. And I think this was really smart for this specific tournament because they're just identifying that mystic runes are kind of broken right now. They're not really where we want them to be from a balanced perspective. So it tarnishes really the fun and enjoyment, I would say, in a lot of tournaments. It's not as fun to watch when everyone's playing the exact same team. So this was very refreshing. Hats off to Method Meta Guild for hosting a killer event. We went head to head with one of our big rivals in Quest, who, by the way, had an amazing week. Don't be mistaken that this was like bad for them. First of all, they got second in a huge tournament, which is always good. And they also won the Manila Open. Spam and Rice took that one down. Down. So huge week for Quest as well and happy for those guys. Before I show game highlights, check this out. Another little detail from MMG is that they did this photo shoot, this promo for everyone before the event actually happened at the LAN. Of course, there was big qualifiers, but then at the LAN event, when all the hypes there, people are in person. Look at this. This is so sick. This is the type of thing that we need to keep seeing, that we need for the game to go the next level. We MMG need hype videos. Black. We need personalities. We need a little bit of drama. And we need those big prize pools in a game that can really facilitate it 
and is always gonna keep the audience on the edge of their seat. Meditate, featuring puzzles. So from there, we had some really heated action. All of these amazing teams competed down to the wire, and we ended up in a finals against Quest. Now, we came up from the loser's bracket after first getting swept by them in the winner's bracket. And if Meditate was to beat Quest, then we'd have to run it back because we came back from the loser's bracket. So this is the final game of the first time going at it. And if we lose here, it's over. If we win, we run it back. Let's see what happened. Valley gonna steal this game from you. Here we go. Irwin comes in. Is this enough risky fish damage? It's enough! 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 It's So we then had to run it back and riding off that momentum took a 2-0 lead on the second go of it. It's Dehi versus Meat Value in an absolutely insane game. Meat Value is playing this sustained comp with tons of shield. Dehi's running AoE and here's the final moments. Damage out that opponent but looks like this is going to be it. And That's this is it! it. That is history! The this match. is history! Redemption story for Metatate Ninja! And we can see some emotions here. From Dehi, from Mino. These guys work so hard. It's such a privilege having them on the team. Chief and Ruthless Reg, they killed the casting. So fun to watch. I think the entire community just had so much fun watching this event. And absolutely crushing it. Taking home the grand prize of $70,000. So that was that and big celebrations all around. If you guys are missing out on this action, I mean, you got to tune into these huge events. You got to watch these top players. I mean, this is what's going to take your game to the next level is seeing what they do in these most difficult moments and situations how are they thinking about the game 70 grand like we come from a time where v2 you would win maybe i don't know a thousand dollars up top for first way back in the day or if it was a big event maybe two or three grand we're just not there anymore we have blown that out of the water the prize pools are here the hype is here we just need the game to be you know at that level as well which i think we're going to get to and we saw that in this event given the format it was a lot more rich in its balance and diversity and that was really really fun to watch so this is going to lead me into my final point for the video and why i decided to make this was to give you know an update and also explain where i've been at so it's been about a month since my last youtube video and if you know anything about me i basically have posted once a week for roughly the past two years and i don't really miss Miss that ever at most maybe I take a week or two off but this is the longest stretch I've gone without one and my last video was about buying endless anger and creating a beast composition just like everybody else on the leaderboard and if we touch back on the leaderboard this is what it looked like for season one this is how it ended I mean it's 70 80 percent or maybe even more than that beast bug and plant for the top 100 this is really really bad from a balanced perspective I have never seen anything like this in other games where it's so one-sided and I'm preaching to the choir at this point I'm not going to spend forever talking about it because everyone kind of already knows however it's worth addressing one last time as we're in the off season and I also appreciate everyone addressing concerns on Twitter because we do have to be vocal and make sure that the team listens to the player experience right so we need to make sure that we're giving constructive feedback and basically this is why I stopped you know I love making content I love sharing new information but when all the information is exactly the same what am I gonna do just make videos on the beast bug build and you know the few different ways that you can play it over and over that's not really what i'm interested in as you know i have so much faith in axie and sky mavis i'm not done making content or done completely making axie videos but i did stop for some time i can't wait to see the announcements the balance changes i don't expect them to be perfect but i do think that we'll continue heading in a positive direction and hopefully have you know a shorter season i think 60 days was exhausting for everybody and things got extremely stale by the end of it the one big problem with rage was that just from a statistics standpoint it was overwhelmingly strong in its base stats the amount of damage it could do compared to everything else there's nothing that could give you that type of swing so if we dial that back i actually think we're going to be quite close to a balanced game yeah there's going to be really strong builds but generally with strategic games the strong builds kind of work themselves out within the community as they get countered and things sort of form organically unfortunately the way that 
endless anger worked it was just so ridiculously strong that plus the collect and protect it was like you had to play that basically to even have a shot at the top 100 i hope that we can look back at like you know season one when we're on season five and six and ten and laugh at how crazy this was and i think that we will be able to jiho recently gave a talk in the philippines and around axie origins we can see that they are working on better matchmaking i think the elo system was kind of a drag as well people were not too happy with it update the return mechanic no idea how they're planning to do that, but very interesting and intriguing. More clear class archetypes. Again, kind of a vague statement. Very interested to see how they deliver there. And lastly, and probably most exciting is new mechanic energy burst. What this tells me is that they are working hard at delivering on the things that we want, which is new styles of gameplay that from the sound of it are going to give you more opportunities from an execution standpoint in the game, not just like deck building, not just buying expensive runes and charms and getting this huge insane boost, but how do you actually outthink your opponent? This is something that, you know, V2 was built on and Origins has been lacking in. There's actually one more slide here where you can see they're thinking about more energy and cards in hand. That's another V2 component that I think if they do properly could be really fun for Origins. And then we've got the balancing sheet and a Blood Moon tweak. So all in all, I'm very happy to see this on a list of concerns that they're addressing. We got more esports on the way, which of course we're all hyped on. Attention Magnet, interesting they say that because we really haven't marketed Axie Infinity yet. We've been waiting for Origins. We've been waiting for new developments. And now that we're here, I think we're getting closer and closer. It's not like Sky Mavis doesn't have the money to fund a huge marketing campaign. And when they do that, I think they'll do a great job. And I think that we'll get millions of eyeballs on the game. And when it's ready, it's going to be amazing. We just have to hang on tight, focus on what we can control, have as much fun as we can. Don't overspend, guys. Everything, it's basically like we're still in alpha. Everything's so freaking new. Runes and charms are going to expire at the end of each season. At least that's how it's been so far. So I know it's tempting to just want to be at the top, but if it's outside of your means, be patient because I think there'll be more opportunities to fairly compete within a reasonable price range in the future. So leave comments below. Let me know what you guys think about where we're at within Origins, about these big esports tournaments. Have you been having fun watching them? Are you competing? And what are you looking forward to the most within the Axie Infinity universe and Origins universe. So that's my update. I look forward to getting back on my once a week schedule. I've also been traveling, so I'm not at home, but I will be back soon to continue with the content. I love you guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.